chapter seven books of uh, prime entry. We've talked about this before, and this will cover all the basics of accounting. Next chapter, we'll start with income statement and uh, balance sheet. So that's a new phase, right? So until this chapter, your basics will be covered, the basic idea of uh, accounting. <clears throat> Understand the use of uh, business documents as sources of information. In the previous chapter, we learned what are books of doc what are business documents. And uh, in this one, we'll learn what's the next step. So when we make a sale, we issue invoice. When you get a purchase, you get an invoice. When there's a return, there's credit note. When there is a uh, payment, there's a, uh, there's, an, there's a receipt or check. So there are these things. In this chapter, we learn how we record those business documents in our accounting the first time. So the first time we record them in these things called books of prime entry. That's where the first, that's where the entries go first. Okay, we'll talk more about them in detail. Explain the use or you explain the advantages of using various books of prime entry. Now we don't have one book of prime entry. We have various for sales. We have sales journal. We have sales returns journal for sales returns for purchases purchase journal for purchase returns purchase returns journal for every cash and bank transaction we have bank cash book and for petty cash a small cash transaction we have petty cash book and finally we have general journal of course we'll talk more about them in detail uh, as you can see the third point here the third bullet point talks about that post the ledger entries from the books of uh, prime entry so from these books of prime entry these journals you put them into double entry records, debits and credits. Account for trade discount. Okay, and how we calculate trade discount. We've already done this one. This is not going to be a problem, but uh, let's see. In chapter four, it was explained how ledger is divided into specialist areas, how cash and bank are usually maintained in cash book rather than in the ledger. So <clears throat> we have, we've learned about three ledgers. Wait, before we get into anything, I think I'll... Uh, quickly tell you what's going on. So the whole accounting process starts with business documents, okay? The whole process starts with business documents, all right? From business documents, we put things into solid, you know? Yes, good. Where do we put them? From business documents, we put things into? Uh, sell the cash book. MashaAllah, very good. Books of prime entry. Books of uh, prime entry. And in the books of prime entry, we have uh, sales journal, purchase journal, sales return journal, purchase return journal. Journal, journal, cash book. Journal, cash, journal, book. cash book, petty cash book, right. And next we go to? ledgers we then put things into ledgers and in ledgers we have three categories mainly sales ledger purchase ledger purchase nominal. and nominal and from there you will learn in the oh we have already learned it goes into trial balance all the balances will end up in trial balance near the end of the year and from there things will go into income statement to calculate profit or loss and finally to balance sheet or statement it's not a free statement of balance position okay but me there yes sir sir uh, when mm. i want to tell you books of prime entry i was about to tell you the seven right it's okay it's okay you've told me before as well it's fine doesn't that doesn't matter actually Saleh. Just memorizing those seven is not the main idea. Memorization is not what you need to do in this IGCC. I think that's the mistake you're making from the last year. You get it. It's not an achievement to learn these seven books of prime entry. That's not an achievement. That'll give you like one marking exam. You get it? So yes, make your focus bigger, right? Do business documents, we learned them in chapter six, right? Books of prime entry, uh, we will learn them now in chapter seven. Ledgers we learned in chapter four, trial balance chapter three, income statement chapter eight, and that's chapter nine. You guys getting that? Yes, sir. Okay. 
that's where the cycle ends and then it all starts again the next year okay right now we're doing books of parameter as i told you we did business documents invoices and all that is made that is uh and then we learned about ledgers the three sales ledger purchase ledger before making the ledgers we actually make books of prime entry although in the syllabus they're teaching you later but that's what happens before books of prime entry is prepared before any ledgers are prepared it was explained how the ledger is divided into specialist areas and how cash and bank are usually maintained in cash book rather than in the ledger businesses use books of prime entry to record goods sold on credit goods purchased on credit sales and returns these books are basically listing devices Grouping similar items together, the use of, okay. Um, so one of the benefits, this will be tested in the exam. One of the benefits of uh, doing this to, to record books of prime entry, one of the benefits is it groups similar items together, right? It lists similar items. What do I mean by that? All the sales, all the credit sales are recorded together as a list. You get it? Which is useful, useful in posting to ledger. So all the similar items are together. And then secondly, it removes a lot of details removed from the ledger. In the ledger account, you just post the totals. You will see that later. It also means that books bookkeeping can be divided between several people. Bookkeeping can be divided between several people because you have seven of those. So different people manage and that will help avoid any frauds. Assist in collating and summarizing account information are useful when preparing control accounts. Useful when preparing control accounts. So there are so many advantages of maintaining books of prime entries. They might ask you this in the exam. So make sure you, re you revise this chapter. Uh, books of prime entry are known as books of original entry or subsidiary books. This is where the things first go, right? They're entered here before they're entered in the ledger. So as you can see, they're entered here before they go into the ledgers. That makes sense. Books of prime entry are also known as books of, oh, we, we did that, let's move on. The books of prime entry are, we read that before, cash book, petty cash book, sales journal, purchase journal, sales returns, purchase returns, and general. We'll go into detail of each of them. However, we have discussed these two already, right? Cash book and petty cash book were covered. That was chapter four. And if I'm not wrong, that was chapter five. Sales journal, purchase journal is this chapter, this one. And the final general journal is chapter 15. Got it? Oh, that's 14, sorry. I thought it was 15. Maybe it changed with the new book. I'm not sure but I just recall it as 15. Anyway, it's 14 as they say, or maybe they are wrong, who knows. That's 15 actually, you see, I told you. Chapter 15, there's a mistake in the book. Let's go back to the content page. Okay, chapter 15. Okay. Let's move on. As, as it is written here, this chapter concentrates on sales, sales, purchases, and the returns journal. Of course, you will need to memorize these definitions for ease of remembrance in the exam. You can understand them. You, will sh you should understand them. You must understand what's, what's going on. But memorizing these key terms will give you a quick definition in the exam, right? Only the total of the sales journal are posted to the sales account at the end of the month. We'll talk about that later. So sales journal... Um, Let's, let's see. As the sales journal is a list of names of business to which credit sales were made. The value of sales are the days on which the sales were made. So it lists all the credit sales as they happen, right? So if you can imagine, this is your sales journal. We, sell, we sold goods to A, record that amount, sales journal. We sold goods to B, record that. Sold goods to C, record that amount. And then total it at the end of the month, it's gonna add up to 1,000 in this case. Say total for the month, total credit sales. Only credit sales going to sales journal, remember. Now, what, what do we do? During the year, what we do is we transfer, we, we record these into individual accounts during the year, in account of A, B, and C. A will be debited by 500 because of sales. Is that correct, Fatma? Yes. Sales is not debited. Remember, I'm not debiting sales account. I'm debiting A's account, B's account, and C's account. Because these are our receivables. Our customers will be our receivables. 
where does that appear in which ledger in sales ledger right under nominal ledger under nominal ledger we will have our sales account in which we'll make a credit entry of a thousand sales account is always credited when you make sales is that correct you say total for the month are you guys getting it or not yes sir i got it we okay we... i'll repeat yeah Under it's okay the... mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead Sir, under the sales ledger, uh, uh, we we co we record the customer's account, and under the dominant ledger, we record the sales account. Yeah, that's right. Under the sales ledger, we put customer's account. Under the nominal ledger, we put sales account. Sales journal is where it all starts, right? So if you notice, these are will be debits or in the individual accounts, debit, debit, debit by a thousand in total. And in total, we will just credit them as a total. That's the double entry. Hope you remember that when you make a sale on credit, your sales account is credit and your receivables are debited. So these are your receivables, 500, 400, and 100 are debited. A, B, and C are debited. These A, B, and C, these people are your receivables. You're gonna receive these amounts from them. And your sales account will be credit because it's an income. It's That's how revenue is treated. That's how sales is treated always, it's credited. When goods are sold on credit, enter the date, name, customer name, invoice total in the sales journal as we did A, B, and C, but we didn't put the dates. We should put the dates too. Debit the customer's account in the sales ledger with the invoice total. As you can see, 500, 400, 100, customer accounts are debited. Why? These Don't look at these customers as human. Look at these customers as account of a receivable. We need to receive this money from them. Are you getting this, Fatma? Yes. Human don't walk around with debits and credits on their faces. Is that correct? So accounting follows a completely different logic from the real world. You get it? You need to get into that zone, get yourself familiar with these ideas. That, then only you will understand what is debit and credit. Like with an open mind, right? You don't expect it to be connected with maths or accounting, I mean, with English or economics. It's completely a different world of its own, right? And that's why a lot of people don't like it or they don't, they cannot make any sense of this because it's a whole different logic, which is not so difficult to learn. It's like learning a new language. Hope you understand. Okay, at the end of the month, what happens? We credit the sales account as we did with the total, as you can see. Credit the sales account in the nominal ledger. Under the nominal ledger, the sales account is credited with the sales journal total, with 1,000. This will now form the double entry for all the individual entries. So all these entries, A, B, and C, have a double entry over here, $1,000. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Sales returns journal follows a similar idea, uh, a, a very, very similar idea to this one. But in this case, what happens is, again, sales returns journal will be listed the same way, but these individual entries will be credited in their accounts. Why? Don't look at their accounts. These are your receivables, right? A, B, and C. Now, when they return goods, let me show that to you. So let's make a sales returns journal. Let's call that sales returns journal. Uh, it, by the way, it does not have a debit side, credit side. Remember, so it may don't make it like a T account. It's more like that. One accounts, one amounts column and uh, a dates column, which we'll ignore for now. And the you know individual entries. So let's say we made some sales to A, but later on A returned some goods under sales returns journal. We'll record that return 100 and let's say b also returns some goods worth 150. you know what we're going to do with that the total is well 250. what are we going to do with these individuals during the year we will credit a's account why don't look at it as a human look at it as a receivable our receivables are going down and we credit that account because that that is going down for us is that correct that asset which is a receivable is going down for us and so we credit that b also went down by 150. Is that right, Fatima? Yes. And so in total, under the nominal ledger, your sales returns account will be debited by how much? 250? In total, that's how many returns were there? 250. So your sales were 1,000, your returns were 250. You should know these basics from chapter four. Chapter 
two actually, two or four. Sales account is credited, sales returns account is debited. We went through all of that, why they're debited, why they're credited. Now, of course, you cannot just keep going back to the same things again and again. What is the sales ledger? What is the nominal ledger? This requires some effort, right? Especially in the beginning. I'm telling you, in accounting, getting into it is hard. Understanding the first chapter, I would say, first 10 chapter is harder than understanding the next 10. Once your first 10 are, first 10 are cleared. Getting me? The first 10 chapters are clear. The next chapter, the next 10 chapters are nothing. Right? Okay. I'll actually push it up to first 13 chapters. For 13, if you understand the first 13 chapters, the next upcoming chapters are nothing for you. They're they're gonna be very easy. Uh, even though they're harder, but you know, they you 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 will be now once you understand the double entry principles, that's the idea. It'll make everything easier. So we also learned how sales returns journal work. Let's have a look at this. Uh, what does it say here? Sales returns journal, also known as sales returns book or return inwards book or return inwards journal. So um, the entries will be recorded. When, when there is a return, record it under the sales returns journal as we did, A and B, and credit to the customer's account. Don't look at customer as a human. From our perspective, these customers are nothing but a receivable, an asset for us. When that goes down, we'll just write them on the credit because you know they're, they they we are losing. I mean, we're not going to receive that amount anymore. Our, our receivables are going down. That's the idea. Let's keep moving. At the end of the month, the total is then debited to sales returns account. We took that example. Um, you will get it further clarified when we look at the example. I mean, when we look at the walkthrough, a proper walkthrough. List seven books of prime entry. Fatma, do you remember any of them? Please list the yeah, ones you remember. There's cash book and petty cash. Mm -hmm. And? Sales journal. Sales written journal. Mm -hmm. And? Purchase. Yeah, purchase journal and purchase return. Purchase returns journal. And uh, finally, you have general journal, which we'll talk about more in chapter 15. Uh, but we'll briefly understand it here as well. When a trader sells goods on credit, he lists them in sales journal and debits the accounts of customers. Explain where and when the double entry for these debit entries is made. What are they saying? A trader records things in sales journal, lists them, and as he's listing A, B, C, all these customers, he will be debiting or she'll be debiting all the customer accounts. All the debits are made. Where will we make the credit entry and when? Do you know the answer? I'll, I'll display that, what, what, the, the situation, what they're asking you. So they're saying during the year, the trader writes things under sales journal debits them in the sales, uh, all these sale ledger accounts, A, B, and C. Where will be the double entry of these? 500, 400, 100. Where is the double entry? Yes, Fatma. We are putting debit entries. Where is the credit entry for them? Yes, Saleh. I said, yeah, at the end of the month hmm. or at the, at the end of the period, hmm. yeah, we will credit the sales account. Yep. Yes. But well, we already discussed that and it's so straightforward. As you can see, you can even see the double entry. A account is debit. Why is it debit? Because of sales. B, is it, B account is debit, why? Because of sales, C account. This represents the double entry. You see the sales account, they are all credited here. Okay. Um, let's look at a, a walk through 7.1. And uh, okay, we'll see about the next topic later, but for, first let's go through this walkthrough. The weaving shed issued an invoice to Sue and Sue for goods $510 subject to a trade discount of 20%. Let's jump at the question, make the necessary entries in the weaving shed. So we are a weaving shed, 
Okay, we are this, the sellers. We are the sellers and uh, we should invoice to sue and sue the customer. All right, and uh, the price was 510 and there was a trade discount of 20%. I've told you before that trade discount does not appear in your books of uh, accounts. What does that mean? That means you always subtract the trade discount, then you put treat that amount as a final amount. So 510 minus 20% uh, of uh, 510, what is it? What is 20% of 510? Yes. Sir, it is, uh, I do 510 multiply 20 percentage, it is, it is uh, 102. 102. And so uh, when you subtract them, you get? Uh, oh, one uh, 408. This is the amount you will record. This is the sale, right? This is the sales. Not yes. 510. This is not the sale. This is the sale. You'll record that as a sale. Okay. Remember, cash discount doesn't work like that. Cash discount will be recorded separately at the time of payment. But this will be the sale, no matter what. Now, if you can see from Weaving Shed perspective, this the boss here is Weaving Shed under under the sales journal because Weaving Shed sold these goods to Sue and Sue. I'll write down Sue and Sue 408. Do you notice? Not 510. 408. In the examination, maybe there will be another column here in which you can show the calculation. You can show this 510 minus 102, and then you can bring this here. You get it? You may show the calculations. There will, there will be space for that. But uh, the final amount will be 408. Okay? Now, what are we going to do with this? We will debit this in the Sue and Sue account. So under the sales journal, sales ledger, we look at the Sue and Sue account, 408 is debited. Sue and Sue is debited by 408, not sales. Sales is not debited. Sue and Sue is debited. Sales is just the detail. This is where the double entry will be. Are you getting this, Fatma? Yes. Right. Let's move on to the next one. The Weaving Shed issued a credit note to Sue and Sue for, credit, for goods returned list price 60. List price is 60. So when goods are returned, you know what, what happens. 60. Minus, again, 20%, because there was a 20% discount when selling, so there'll be 20% discount when uh, returned. You should know that. And 20% of that is 12, which is going to be 48. In the sales returns journal, you will put 48. Why? Because of Sue and Sue returning the goods. Sue and Sue returned the goods, 48. Sue and Sue is a customer. It's a receivable. Fatima, your receivables are going down or up? when your customer returned the goods? Down. Down, very logically, because Sue and Sue is not going to pay you anymore. As you can see, Sue and Sue account is credit. Right? Sales return is not the credit. We never credit sales returns when there is a sales return. Are you getting me, Fatma? It's Sue and Sue that is being credit. Right? Yes. Focus on the account name, not the detail. Detail is the reason why this was credit. We need to give a reason why Sue and Sue is credit. Well, it's because of sales return. Because, you know, what if they make a payment? You know when Sue and Sue makes a payment, Fatma, what's going to happen? Your bank will be debit and Sue and Sue will be credit. See, in the detail, it tells us the reason why it was credit. Why the, re why the receivables are going down? Did they pay the money? Did they return the goods? Did it become irrecoverable? Did we give them discount? Is that why sales return? Is that why uh, receivables are going down? There should be a reason. This detail only represents that reason and the double entry. Are you getting the point, Fatma? Yes. Okay. Um, next one. The Weaving Shed, done with that, the Weaving Shed also sold goods on credit to fine furnishing 1,000 subject to trade discount 25%, issued the invoice on the same day. The point is 1,000 worth of goods were sold, minus 250, 750 worth of goods were actually sold. Will not count 1,000. The sales were 750. To whom? To fine furnishing. So under the sales journal, list fine furnishing 750, right? And then of course we'll go down to fine furnishing account 750 debit. Why? It's a receivable. It's a customer. We sold them goods. Of course we're gonna debit that account. Don't for, don't look at it as a human or an entity. Just look at it as your receivable. That's what it is. Your customer is your receivable, and your receivable will be debited when they increase. They'll be credited when they decrease. 
That goes for any asset. Assets, they go up, are debited, they go down, are credited. That's the nature of it. Okay. Um, next. The Weaving Shed sent a FAR and company an invoice for $220 for goods supplied on credit. Let's read that again. Weaving Shed sent Jafar and company an invoice for 20 for goods supplied on credit. So there is this new customer now. We send them an invoice means we made them a sale. And so again, Jafar and company listed in the sales journal. Where 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 else would it be going into? In the Jafar and company account, 220, right? Are you following, Fatima? Yes, sir. Next, Jafar and company got some refund. Not a refund because they never paid us. It's a credit sale. And so we issued them a credit note. It's actually a re reduction in invoice. It means it's like a sales return. It's treated as a sales return. And so Jafar and company returned. Essentially, you can look at it that way. Although it's not a return, it's just a reduction in price because there was an overcharge. But uh, the point is Jafar and company will not pay us 10 anymore because that was overcharge. And so if you notice, on a sales returns journal, we list the Jafar and company and Jafar and company will be credited. Why? The receivables are going down. What happens next? Fatma, do you guess what, what happens next? So if you notice, Fatma, we made this debit entry, we made this debit entry, we made this debit entry. Where will be the double entry of these? There should be a credit entry as well. Where In which account will that be? Sue and Sue was debited, fine furnishing debited, uh, Jafar and company. Nominal ledger, but under nominal ledger, we have sales account, purchase account, returns account. Mm -hmm. In which account? Sales account. Very good. There we go. Two reasons why you should say that. Number one, well, these are our customers. When we sell them, we debit customer account, we credit sales. Secondly, it's obvious in front of you, you can see that, you know, Sue and Sue is debit, Fine Furnishing is debit, your fine company is debit, all because of sales. Obviously, we're going to credit the sales account. Under which ledger? Under nominal ledger. All these accounts are under which ledger? Under sales ledger. You remember, under sales ledger, we have all the customer accounts. Under nominal ledger, we have everything, right? All the non-personal accounts. And so if you go down to sales account, credit sales for the whole month, 1378. Basically, this is 408 plus 750 plus 220. Basically, this is this. The total of all these debits will be credited in the sales account, as you can see. Same goes for returns. 48 is returned, 50, uh, 10 is returned. In total, 58 is returned. And so dub double entry of this will be where, Fatima? These two individual entries. Where will the double entry? In which account? Sales return. Perfect. In the debit side of sales return. I think now everything everything is making sense to you. Sales returns account is debited. Right? Mm -hmm. Very good. But in reality, what we'll do is we'll just look at this total and we'll transfer that to sales return. That's one of the advantages of journals. It totals, it, it reduces number of entries in sales account and sales returns account, purchase account, purchase returns account as well. If you notice, trade discount does not appear in ledger accounts. It may be shown as a calculation, but it is not, it is not entered as a final figure. As a final figure, we never write 510. We always write after the discount, 408, as we saw previously, right? after the discount amount, not the before the discount amount. The entry in the sales account is double entry of the three individuals. So all these individuals are debited and in return, this was credited once. Okay, and then same goes for sales returns. Uh, Sally, you were asking something. I just didn't want to, you know, stop the <clears throat> stop the flow of the class. You can ask that now, go ahead. So your hand was raised. Actually, I was about to tell you that there are things that you have already done. Oh, yeah. I, I, know, I know you would know. Look, where I know you will not be able to answer, I'll ask you that kind of a thing, right? So I knew where you where you might make a mistake. I know this is easy for you, so uh, we'll keep moving. Trade discount may be shown in the journals for information, but is never entered in double entry records. Only the net value is recorded. It means net means, I've told you before, we may record this and then this in the journal as for information, but in the in the totals column we will record four zero eight, and that's what matters. This is just for information, just to show what happened. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah, that's about the sales journal. I think uh, we'll stop the meeting here and take a small break.
be back study purchase journal and uh yeah for now let's end this uh meeting purchases journal the purchase journal is the list of uh, names of businesses from which credit purchase were made so basically these are your suppliers the credit suppliers uh when you buy when you buy goods on credit you list them in purchase journal just like when you sell goods on credit you list them in sales journal right the purchase journal is also called the purchase book or purchase day book just similar to sales ones this journal is written up using the invoices received from suppliers the entries are summarized as follows when goods are purchased on credit as we saw in the sales journal it's literally the same they look the same they're recorded the same way we record the details, the amount after the discount, right? The amount, the name of supplier in this case before we had customers, but now suppliers. And then, uh, well, the same idea, but you know what? Let's just get into it and then we'll understand it better. So if you look at an example, in a purchase journal, you will list all your credit purchases. So Sue and Sue is our perspective. And a purchase journal, we have all these suppliers, weaving shed, curtain company, right? Where will these amounts go? 408, 438. Uh, these are your suppliers. So in the weaving shed account, in the purchase ledger, the weaving shed account, you will credit. Because these are payables. You get it, Fatima. Not receivables. In the previous one, you had receivables. But here we have payables. You guys getting it? Yes. All right. Curtain Company is another supplier, and so we will credit that account as well when you make purchases. Now, you tell me, Fadwan, where will be the double entry of these two? Um, in the purchase account. Very in good. In the ledger. Perfect. So, in the purchase ledger, and these these are our suppliers. Don't look at them as don't look at them as humans. They're not. I mean, they're suppliers, but don't change your don't don't think about it that way. Think about it as payables. These are your payables. You need to pay this one. You need to pay this one. When you purchase from them, your payables are going up. You should know that when liabilities, liabilities go up, they are credited. They go down. They are debited. Does that make sense? So as we can see, the weaving shed is a liability. Curtain company is a liability. When they go up, credited, credited. Okay, as we can see, two entries, 646. They are both credited, and together they will be debited. As Fatma just said, they both will be together debited in purchase account as a total. I think it's quite simple. I, I, I really think that, honestly. Uh, these individual entries, you can go and match them, but right now we're just trying to understand the concept of it. Purchase returns journal, again, there'll be some returns. You list them just like you list in your sales journal. You list them, 48 and one, uh, 119. These are your payables, giving share and current company. When you return goods to them, your payables will go up or down? Fatima. When you return goods, your payables will go up or down? Down. Down, because you don't want to pay that anymore. You return goods, you're not going to pay that anymore. And so, if you notice, as liabilities go down, they're debited. And so, when Weaving Shed and Curtain Company, when we return goods to them, they're debited. Again, don't look at them as human or businesses. Only our perspective. For us, these are payables. We need to pay them. We need to pay them more, credit their account. We need to pay them less, debit their account. That's the idea. I think you're getting really close to understanding this. All you need is more effort, more revision, right? And you can definitely understand this. Got me? Got my got, got my point? Yes. Okay. Uh, after this chapter, you must go and revise the chapter, um, I think, two. That was about double entries. So go ahead and revise the chapter two again. Even one, why not? So spend like a couple hours and sit through chapter one, two, three, quick revision. Try to solve all the questions. As long as... You can solve all these questions that are given in the previous chapters. It means you're learning. It means you're, 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 you don't need to learn any. It means you, you, you've learned everything, basically. And so anyway, these purchase returns will be, deb will be credited in the purchase returns account itself. If, if we go down 167, this acts as a double entry of these two individuals. Um, can go through this if you wish to uh, read it, but it's just things we've already discussed. 
Regen checklist and we're done with this chapter. Let me see what's in the chat. Uh, that's from Saleh. Okay. Uh, yeah. So as I said, go through. Now I can solve questions. Yeah. Just go through the previous chapters once again. And Saleh is right, actually. I think I can give you these uh, exam style questions for homework. Maybe not the sixth one because it's uh, like we'd rather do this from, from the past papers, but from for the first five. I think we can do that. For now, let me stop the recording first, then we can continue talking.